So today's article is about Natalie Boyce, who lived in Australia. Here she is. She died in March 2022 after she received a Moderna vaccine. So Natalie Boyce's death, major update after Melbourne woman died five weeks after Moderna vaccine COVID booster. The death of a young woman in her 20s, 21 to be precise, after she received a COVID vaccine could progress to a full coronial inquest. So an inquest is an investigation into exactly how she died. And so this is where it's going, legally speaking. Coroner Catherine Fitzgerald told the involved parties that she would tighten the reins on expert reports. Now here it means reduce the number of expert reports being filed to the court as mountains of medical information piled up. So the coroner is saying that there's too many, there are too many documents being filed to the court. And so she would like to see fewer documents. Um, there's too much medical information being filed to the court. She's not happy about that. Natalie Boyce, 21, died in March 2022 at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne, five weeks after receiving a Moderna vaccine booster. Now we're going to rush past the legal parts. There's Natalie. Um, we're going to rush past these legal parts and go straight to uh, down here and to hear a little bit more about Natalie. Miss Boyce, that's Natalie, was studying at Deakin University. She spent the last three, work, three weeks of her life unconscious. I think that's perhaps a picture of her there. I'm not sure, but I think it is. Um, her death certificate lists myocardial infarction with subacute myocarditis as the cause. I think infarction is a type of heart attack, but I'm not sure. Um, when she was 15, Miss Boyce was diagnosed with an uncommon blood clotting disorder that affects one in 2,000 people. So perhaps this is important. Perhaps this is um, partly why she had such a terrible adverse reaction to the vaccine. It's not known, but perhaps. Miss Boyce's mother, Deborah Hamilton, previously told a parliamentary inquiry that she believed her daughter would be alive today if she had not received the COVID-19 vaccine booster in 2022. Now, I'm trying to show you that this is a mixed conditional. She would be alive today second conditional, if she had not received the COVID-19 vaccine booster in 2022, third conditional. So this is a type of mixed conditional and you can see it here. It's would plus infinitive. That's the second conditional part and um, hadn't and the third form. That's the third conditional part. And, you know, would be alive now if she hadn't received the vaccine in 2022. And then we've got a nice bit of inversion instead of using an if. And remember that you can always do this with third conditional. You can use inversion of the subject in the auxiliary verb, had we. So we could do it even here. We could say her daughter would be alive had she not received the COVID-19 vaccine booster. And then you don't need to say if. Yeah, you say had she not received. Yeah, and it means if she had not received. So had we known means if we had known. So had we known that there were risks. Yeah, if we had known that there were risks, there would have been. So this is third conditional all the way through. It's not mixed. There would have been no way that I would have allowed Natalie to receive another vaccine. So this was not the first one by the sounds of it. And I know that she would not have had it either. That you can see that that's all in third conditional. Yeah, I would have, I, I know there's no way I would have allowed and she would not have had it either. Miss Hamilton told MPs in Canberra in 2023. The day after getting the Moderna booster, Miss Boyce fainted. She lost consciousness. She passed out. Yeah. Miss Boyce fainted. She had a fever. She had stomach pain. And then she started vomiting. Her condition deteriorated over trips to doctors and several different hospitals. Miss Hamilton has blamed both the vaccine mandates, certainly, and medical negligence from Victoria's health system. Miss Boyce was encouraged by her part-time employer 
Yeah, so she worked part time somewhere, perhaps at the supermarket or something like that. And she was encouraged by her part time empl employer, who I assume knows nothing about her medical background. She was encouraged by a part time employer to get vaccinated with the safe and effective stuff. And she was required to get a vaccination to go to university. So this is why I think you do have a fair argument in saying that Miss Boyce did not give her consent and she was coerced into getting vaccinated by her employer and by her university, even though she had a history of blood clots. Parties represented in court on Wednesday were Triple Zero Victoria, Moderna, Miss Hamilton, Monash Health, Mulgrave Private Hospital, Alfred Health and Eastern Health. The matter will be back before the coroner's court for another mention hearing in October.